Today, we are discussing a culture that you may already have heard of before, the people of the Renan steppe realms. These realms, which define the Renan culture, are known as fierce opponents against the imperialistic aspirations of the Navurians. But how this came to be is what you will learn in this episode of Weltengeist. Who better to introduce you to the ways of Renan culture than an eyewitness to them? A witness to their raw power. The survivor of an assault at night by the Renan storm riders, warriors who can move as fast as wind. The following report reached the Nivurian general near the borders of the Renan territory. When night fell upon us, so did the Renan. The scouts were probably the first to fall, though we never witnessed their deaths. Next were the guards. We could mark their death as the fires they maintained were extinguished. Then darkness came and with it, shadow. Men and women painted in black, clad in fur and hide, with the distinction between the warriors and the beasts they rode impossible to discern. Monsters riding monsters, with legs like lightning and a roar that was the thunder of a blaring horn. The entire host was shouting and laughing in that coarse and cruel Renan tongue. The morning after the attack, the eternal light blessed me with a trance-like state of mind, the work keeping my hands busy and my mind blissfully unaware. I am not a soldier, merely a humble part of the supply train. Battle belonged to the warriors. Our only responsibility was the aftermath. I took stock of the remaining gear, armor and weapons picked up from the ground and pulled from unmoving bodies. I can easily mend the dents, cuts and sprung rings caused by sword and spear, but the Renans wield no such weapons. I had to discard most helmets and plates that had met the axe or hammer, cleaved open and deformed by brutal force. Yet I had fared better than the people over in the medical tent. The injuries of the surviving soldiers were more severe than they had thought, and, as weird as this might sound, there were fewer injured to tend to than they might have hoped, because just as I did not envy the people in the tent, Surely they did not envy the ones putting countless bodies into the ground, men and women that had already succumbed to their wounds. The few carts we still possessed were for the more decorated bodies to be brought home for burial in Navurian soil. I hope that this report gives you an impression of why the Navurian expansions towards the north are currently stalled. The Renan, as a people, have bodies rife with muscle and are impossibly mobile, with feats of cavalry more like a form of art than an act of war. Their hair color ranges from red to a dark blonde and brown, usually grown long and braided together with silver or pearl ornaments. Their glyph tattoos are just as menacing, if not more. What the Navurians do not know is that Renan's successes and defeats are literally written on their face. Show me your face and not your words, goes a Renan saying which is why some criminals wear masks in order to cover these identifying features. Women, on the other hand, usually place tattoos on their hands and forearms instead, although facial tattoos are not unheard of. The Renan are divided, however minutely, between tribes and clans that extend over the entire northern steppe of Navir, and are divided into different domains. The Great Kingdom of Ren is considered the main seat of the Renan culture, and moves near the Navurian borders, on the eastern coast, at the Tan Mountains. This is where the urban Renan, who have almost completely abandoned their nomadic origins, tend to live. West of the Tan Mountains is the actual steppe inhabited by mainly nomadic tribes. However, during the winter months, they retreat to the Tan Mountains and the cities of the Greater Domain. In summer, these tribes set out to plunder and pillage the small western settlements on the other side of the steppe. Nevertheless, there are also peaceful tribes that use this warmer time to pasture and raise their cattle and to trade. The most well-known and largest nomadic tribes are the ones of the Tanikar, who have made a name for themselves through their outstanding martial skills and are seen as Navuria's main adversaries. Then there are the Jaraki, who trade in the north with the distantly related peoples of the Norin, and instead of plundering them, have established the first trade relations and tribute agreements with the small western tribes. They are known as the diplomats and are K 
characterized by an unusually high charisma for Renan. Some members of this tribe have already moved to the cities and were able to take high positions in politics and business. The last tribe worth mentioning are the Gadashik, who are the pastoralists of the Renan and in the summer lead the countless livestock of the Renan across the blooming steppe and sustain the food production. Of course, there are many other smaller tribes, but their mention will have to find a place in another video. The main food source for the nomadic Renan is the Valarak, a goat-like creature that makes its home on the steppes and provides tasty cheese and meat. Other livestock are the Shakar, which are mainly kept for their fur and meat, and the Hukar, which act as beasts of burden. In addition to animal-based foods, especially in the Greater Ren Kingdom east of the Ten Mountains, some farmers cultivate so-called Gershika plants, which ensure the food supply in winter. This is a rather recent development, which took place only through the permanent sedentary lifestyle of the Renan a few generations ago. However, we have forgotten a very special creature, one that has allowed the Renan to rule the steppe through its speed, resilience and ability to carry up to two Renan soldiers into battle. We're talking about the Tuzikan. This is an ability that is particularly useful for the military. Of course, there are the storm riders you've already heard about, riders who ride faster than the wind. Riders who become a beast themselves by bonding with the Tuzikan. They are often armed with a large hammer, an axe or a moon sword. Weapons that are unheard of for Nevurians and other cultures. We could talk at length about the fact that an empire that is not unified has such a vast army or about a military structure and its tangled web of organization because of that ununified status. However, that, along with the political structure of the realms, remains a topic for another video. For now, we'll turn our focus back to Rhenish culture. The Renan can be seen as the counterpart to the Navirians, for they do not seek wealth and power, but even when looting and pillaging, take only what they need to live. Their clothing is therefore rather pragmatic. Ornaments and jewelry are rarely found at Rhenish markets. This allows Rhenish rulers to stand out with their more extravagant displays of woven patterns, hair ornaments and general opulence in their dresses. Unlike the Nevurians, the Renan do not fear the knights and in their culture and beliefs, the knight is considered something good. More specifically, as something that frees people from the burden of the day and brings peace because compared to the jungle, the steppe is silent at night. But exactly this way of life leads to the fact that the Renan are regarded by the Nevurians as the people of Tanud, children of the shadows and bringers of the eternal night, something that must be fought against and defeated. And that is why the Nevurian expansion was brought to the north, to stop the eternal night and eliminate the supposed children of Tanud. Maybe the Nevurian expansion will cause the unification of the tribes, even bring back the great grandmaster of the inner kinetics, and maybe even put the Norin in the far north on guard, a culture that can be considered distantly related cousins of the Renan and about whom little to nothing is known, but all these topics we will discover in further videos. So if you don't want to miss an episode, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What do you think of the Renan culture? What kinds of things would you want to know more about? Let me know down in the comments. Until then, Weltengeist.